Hey there, welcome back to my channel. I'm Cybersecurity Meg, and I'm super stoked that you're here. Today, we're going to be discussing the top five skills that, in my opinion, are necessary to be successful in a cybersecurity career. Four of the skills that I'll be discussing are definitely more on the soft skill side, and only one of them is a little bit technical. The reason that I'm making this video more broad and generalized towards cybersecurity and not just towards a specific role, such as a cybersecurity analyst or a risk manager or an incident manager, is because those roles are always going to be highly contingent upon the company you're working at, the size of the company, the expectations of the job description, and so on. Those are always going to be different. However, in my opinion, I've found that to be successful in cybersecurity, these five skills are absolutely necessary to have, and that's pretty much the same sentiment regardless of what subfield of cybersecurity you're working in, from pen testing to red teaming to incident handling. Regardless, these are all going to be extremely popular skills that are necessary to be successful. The first skill that I want to go over is the only one that I consider to be a little bit technical, and to be frank, it's not even really a technical skill, but that is being able to pay attention to detail. And the technical side of that that I'm mostly referring to is the ability to determine what is abnormal from what is normal. Now, let me give you a few examples of this. This could be applicable if you're a cybersecurity analyst or a SOC analyst. They are different, but for the sake of the argument, let's kind of put them into the same group. So let's say you're looking at a SIM, and of course your SIM alerts on something, what it thinks is going to be abnormal, or perhaps an event that stands out and needs to be looked at. Your job, usually in one of these roles, is to determine, is this an accurate true positive or is this a false positive? And a large part of that is being able to ascertain whether or not the event that you're looking at amongst maybe an entirely large pile of logs, is that event abnormal? Is it expected within your environment? Is it expected of that user or that workstation or that server to be taking that action during that time on that recipient? You have to be able to have an understanding within your environment specifically about what's expected and what's not expected. And to be able to do this efficiently and effectively to some degree of accuracy, you need to be able to pay attention to detail. You need to be able to spot out that the one log, perhaps amongst a pile of thousands or hundreds, is something that's abnormal and needs to be looked at. You might have one incident in the quote unquote haystack that is a very large haystack and being able to pay attention to what exactly is and is not normal is extremely important. A lot of cybersecurity is, hey, should this be happening? And if it's not happening, what do we do to fix it? And what do we do to prevent it from reoccurring? The being able to pay attention to fine detail is gonna be extremely important in a lot of cybersecurity fields, auditing, Obviously, it's going to be important in auditing, in risk management, in incident management. Regardless of what subfield you're looking at, this is definitely one of my top skills that I think is necessary. The second skill that I think is necessary to be successful in any cybersecurity career is to be able to communicate clearly and effectively, regardless of whether that is written or oral communication. Now you might be thinking, well, Meg, I want to get into cybersecurity because I don't want to have to talk to people. And I mean, it really depends on what kind of cybersecurity you're doing. Obviously, if you're doing consulting and you're working with customers, then probably you're going to be engaging with a lot more people. However, if you're doing internal security, maybe the only people you're really having to speak to is your internal team, the teammates within IT that you may ne be needing to work with, and then the stakeholders within the business. Regardless of if you're doing internal or consulting, you still need to be an excellent communicator. And the reason I think this is so important is because, to be frank, when you're working in cybersecurity, regardless of if you're working for a small, an SMB or a mom and pop shop or an enterprise company, you still need to be able to 
communicate your findings of what you're discovering to the people around you. And a lot of times what you're discovering in cybersecurity, you as a technical professional have to be able to explain these technical minute details to someone who is not technical. Maybe they don't know how firewalls work. They don't know what an ACL is. They don't understand how breaches can occur. You have to be able to translate what has occurred in a technical sense to the stakeholders maybe C-level or your management or someone on the business side who don't necessarily have the level of technical knowledge that you do. Beyond needing to be able to communicate effectively with your stakeholders, you also need to be a commu good communicator with your team. This is going to be more applicable, of course, if you're working for a larger company or if you're working in consulting. But when you're on a team and perhaps let's say you work on a SOC, for example, if you're a tier one analyst and you need to be able to communicate an incident that you believe has happened to the tier two analyst, you may need to write an extensive report to write to the tier two analyst. This is what I found. This is why I think it might be malicious. Can you please confirm for me? That said, communication. I mean, this is very general for all fields. I feel like even outside of cybersecurity in IT or marketing or business, communication is just one of those skill sets that people are like, it's 2021 almost, and I can text people or I can just write an email. And frankly, to be in cybersecurity, you're going to need to be able to communicate effectively and well. And that's that. The third skill that I think is extremely important to work in cybersecurity is to be a self-guided learner, to be self-motivated, to have the desire to want to learn more, and to have a lot of that come from within you, from your own genuine and sheer curiosity, to want to be better, to better the field, to be able to do things on your own. Of course, you have a team, and this is well, I mean, hopefully you have a team, maybe if you're working for SMB or something, you could be the entire IT department. But the point is, is you should be able to engage yourself and motivate yourself and push yourself to work harder and be better within your own job. A lot of this can come down to say you find you have an issue, you're trying to create a PowerShell script. And instead of just turning to your colleague right next to you and asking all 10 of your colleagues, I mean, granted, this is pre COVID, we're talking being like, hey, how do I fix this? You should be able to turn to Google, do a quick Google research, try to figure it out on yourself, do a little bit of troubleshooting. And if you can't figure it out at that point, turn to the people around you and say, hey, I haven't been able to figure this out on my own. Here's what I tried, X, Y, and Z, which I tried, failed. Do you have any suggestions? Being able to research things yourself and have the drive to kind of want to figure out and fix issues yourself is really important in my experience. Because frankly, in cybersecurity, I think most people can agree a lot of days can be filled with troubleshooting or trying to determine if something is an issue. Anything that takes more than a few minutes of using your brain, you should be able to kind of sit there and figure things out yourself. Of course, you should be able to turn to your team as well and communicate with them. That's extremely important to be able to rely on your teammates, but you don't want to constantly have to be bothering the people around you for simple or minute things that really you could figure out yourself. The fourth skill that I want to discuss kind of relates to number three, but it's to have a good attitude. And the reason this is important, especially if you're working on a team, is because and this is applicable to a lot of careers when you work on a team, but if you're on a team and you have people relying on you or people that you need to work with and support, and you just come in with this bad outlook and negativity or a bad attitude, or you don't want to do something, or you just really don't like what you're doing in your job, that can so heavily affect the people that are around you. And in cybersecurity, a lot of people are really passionate about what they do. They want to protect the organization they work for. They want to learn something new. They continue doing cybersecurity outside of their day job because they like what they're doing so much. 
people who are in the career just because they think it's good to make money or it's going to have a quick advancement up the corporate ladder. This is not the best mindset, in my opinion. And I've found that people who get into cybersecurity just for these facts or trying to achieve these things, they don't perform well and they don't end up enjoying themselves. Really, the honest truth, I think a lot of cybersecurity professionals will agree, is that cybersecurity can be a very demanding and sometimes stressful job. And if you're not in it for the right reasons and you're bringing this negative attitude or a lack of enjoyment about your career with you every day, you're going to start to bring down the people who are around you. And that's just muy malo, very bad, as they say here in Spain. <laughs> Forgive my Spanish. It is not good. I know. The last skill that I want to discuss is the ability to prioritize tasks or incidents or essentially to be able to prioritize where you put your focus during the day. It depends what kind of management you have. Perhaps you have a manager that is constantly looking over you and saying, hey, you need to do this first and then do this and then do this. And I don't have that kind of management, so I can't speak too much to it. I'm sure that would provide you a lot of insight on how you should prioritize things. But from my general understanding of a lot of people I've spoken to in the field, a lot of these people are trusted and empowered by their employers to lean on their experience and their past backgrounds and prioritize what needs to be done throughout the day. Sure, you might need to stand up a virtual machine or get a new tool running or do an update or do some vulnerability management, but you might find in your workday that there's a new CVE released and there's a zero-day zero exploit that's in the wild. And you say, hey, we, are, we can be affected by this. Like We have an environment that could be exploited by this. A cybersecurity professional needs to be able to shift their attention away from what they're doing to something that takes a higher priority because that higher priority action item could more drastically impact negatively the organization they work for. Generally, for most cybersecurity professionals, they're going to put their prior prioritization on tasks or incidents in an order of things that are going to have the largest impact. So of course, if you need to do an update for a tool and you need to push it out to all your colleagues within the company, this could be important. But as I mentioned, if this new CVE comes out and there's an exploit in the wild that could affect you, you need to be able to stop what you're doing on that rollout hit the pause button, perhaps find someone else to take it over for you and shift your attention to the things that could more drastically cause an immediate impact to your organization. That's just a super hypothetical scenario and that would depend on a lot of things like change management and whether or not you have someone else who can pick up the project you are working on with your colleagues. But it's just a basic example of being able to determine what is your biggest priority and being able to shift your attention to put your attention where it needs to be. Those are the top five skills that, in my opinion, are the most important to have a successful cybersecurity career. I'm really curious to hear what you think about them. Do you agree with any? Do you disagree with any? I'd like to hear about your opinions on all. And if you're already working in cybersecurity, what do you think are the top five skills needed to be successful in cybersecurity? I hope you have a great rest of your week. I know next week is Christmas or the holidays or any holiday that you could possibly celebrate. So I hope you have a great time with your family or your friends and you stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.